Hi everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to be doing my next sublimation project and I love how it turned out. So I can't wait for you guys to see the whole process and see how easy it is. So I was sharing with you last week that I finally purchased my sublimation printer. I decided to go with the Sawgrass SG500 and I am loving it. I'm loving the printer. I'm loving the software that comes with it. And I'm just enjoying the whole process of sublimation and the final results of the project. It's just a lot of fun and I'm I'm really excited to start bringing more sublimation to my channel. So last week's video was creating little sublimated bookmarks and I seriously found that to be the perfect first beginner project with sublimation because the project is not only super fast but it's also really small. So it's small in nature, it's quick, it really helps you get your feet wet with sublimation. So if you missed that I'll be sure to link it for you so that you can catch up but I really recommend starting with a really small basic project like bookmarks because they're really really fun and they turn out cute and it's really quick and easy. So for my next sublimation project, I created a photo collage mug and I actually converted my Instagram feed and I made a little photo collage mug from my pictures that are on Instagram and it turned out so cute. Now, as a reminder, my photography style is very light, bright and airy. So that's how it sublimated on my mug because my photos are much lighter and airier and brighter in nature. So it depends on what type of photos you take and how they will sublimate, but mine are very, very true to color. This is exactly how my photos look when I print them on a print and frame them, and so they sublimated exactly the same way. They turned out so, so cute. So I actually used an Amazon sublimation mug. As a reminder, you cannot just use any mug. You have to use a sublimation mug when doing sublimation projects. So for my heat source, I actually used the new Cricut Mug Press, and it really made quick and easy work out of making this photo collage mug, and I thought it was super, super simple to use. So I'm going to walk you through my entire process, and I'll be sure to be sharing throughout the video all the materials that I'm using to create this little photo collage mug. If you need to reference any more materials, then be sure to check out the description box below this video. There's a little arrow that you can click down on, and then it opens up the description box where you can find all of the materials and all of the tools that I used to create this little look today. All right, so let's go ahead and start creating this little mug. We're gonna start by going into Creative Studio so I can show you how to get the template all ready. Then we'll print it out and get it all prepped and ready to be sublimated. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's start creating. So this is really easy to do and we are going to start in Sawgrass Creative Studio. Now, again, this is the software that is compatible with the Sawgrass sublimation printers. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to custom canvas and I am going to create my own custom canvas and first thing I need to do is come up to unit and change it to inches and then I'm going to type in my width of 8.75 and my height of 4.25. Now these are dimensions that I am referencing from Cricut for the taller mugs so I believe they're 15 ounce mugs but um, I'm going to just use the mug wrap template dimensions for that. Okay, so now I have an actual template that I can use to put my photos on or to place my little photo collage within. So I just know that I need to stay within these boundaries right here in order to have it at the correct size for the mug that I'm doing. So now what I can do to add pictures is come over to galleries and then go to my images. Now I already uploaded the images that I want to use and I did that by just clicking upload image and that's where you will locate your images and upload them into Sawgrass Creative Studio. So I can then click on the images that I want. I'll be using these three here. I actually just took screenshots of my Instagram feed and that's how I'm putting together my little photo collage mug. I thought this would be super fun and I'm really loving it. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and click on the first image I want to bring in. So just clicking once, all I have to do then is size it. So as you can see, it's way too big for my template. So I'm gonna come over to scale and I find it quicker to use the scale button to size that down. And then of course you can come over to a little corner and then just drag it in 
to size it appropriately. Okay, so that looks good. So I will bring that over to the left side. Now I'm just going to roughly place these in for now. And then once I have all of the images in here, then I will go ahead and perfect the placement. So now I will bring in my second image. So I'll go and click on the next image I want to use, which is right here. So I'll simply click and there it is. Again, I find scale really quickly moves um, the image up or down really fast. So I like to start there and then I just tweak it by pulling in one of the sides. Okay, then I can place that where I would like it, lining up my grid. Okay, that looks great. So again, coming over to select my final image, just like that, scale it down. Perfect. And then I will make it even smaller. Okay, very good. Now you'll see as I place this final one that it cuts off um, a few of my pictures here and I want them to be included in my mug. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to just start tweaking a little bit just so that I can fit my images where I want them in the mug. Okay, then I'll go like this. All right, maybe just a little bit more. Okay, so I'm happy with how everything looks. So once I'm happy and I'm ready to finalize, what I will do next is simply click on print. So print is just right up here in the upper right hand corner. And once I click this, it will let me start making my selections for printing on my Sawgrass printer. So I clicked that and then my print settings box will come up. I'm printing on my Sawgrass SG500. And then I love that it also mirrors my image automatically for me just because it's nice that I won't have to remember to do that time after time. And then for my materials, I need to tell it what I'm sublimating on, which is another reason why I am absolutely loving the Sawgrass Creative Studio and the whole Sawgrass system. So I love this. So now I'm going to decide on what I'm going to sublimate on, which of course is going to be a ceramic mug. So I'll click that. Now I, as a reminder, want to remind you, you cannot just do this on any ceramic mug, this has to be a sublimation mug. And then the paper that I'm using is some sublimation paper. Mine is the text print R, so I already have that right in here. And then for color and quality, I have it at high quality and photographic. Then I can go ahead and say print. Okay, and then what it will do next is load my print manager. So it's going to give me a confirmation that it has successfully queued my print, so I can go ahead and click OK. And then when I click into my print manager, then I will see a preview of my sublimation print right here. So again, it's reminding me that my substrate is a ceramic mug and that I am using my text print R paper, which is again, sublimation paper, and then I have it set to mirror. So that's wonderful. And then the final step is just clicking print. And once I click print, it will send it to my Sawgrass SG500 and it will get it all printed out. Okay, so my print has printed off of my sublimation printer, and the first thing you'll notice is that it's very dull in color. It's very muted and pale, but that will change once it has been sublimated onto the mug, and the colors will just take on that vibrancy of their original color and tone once it's been sublimated. So first off, I want to mention I am very impressed with the actual quality of all these little prints. When I was working in the Sawgrass Studio or Creative Studio, um, it looked a little grainy, so I was a little nervous that my images were going to look pixelated or grainy, but so far they look really, really high quality, so I'm really excited about that. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to use a paper trimmer, and I'm mainly using a paper trimmer because I want to make sure I get really, really straight lines, and I think that's going to just really help with lining it up on the mug because I like to line my mug up, as you'll see in a minute, as it's standing up. So I'm just going to trim off the white edges on the top and bottom, which is the top and bottom, oops, this way, the top and bottom of the print, but I'll leave the white on the sides or at least a little bit of it so that I can apply it to my mug with some heat resistant tape. So I'm just going to trim off those edges just like that. That looks good. And then turn it over, okay, and trim off this 
side as well and that looks good okay and now if you hear any um, wind or background noise I have my nice slider all opened up because I like to work in a well ventilated room when doing sublimation so if you hear any background noise it's just the nice spring breeze that we have going on. So I am going to preheat my Cricut, or my Cricut mug press and let that warm up while I am getting everything prepped. And now I'm going to grab my mug. So the mug I'm using, I purchased from Amazon. Again, it is a sublimation mug. I'll link it in the description box below this video as well as all the other materials that I'm using. So first and foremost, I am going to take a lint roller and I'm going to make sure there is no lint on the surface of my mug. So taking a lint roller and just making sure that it is nice and clean. If you have lint on the surface of your mug, you will potentially get some blue dots on your surface and it just does not look very good. Okay, and then because I can just see some smudges probably from me handling it behind the scenes, I'm going to take my lint-free cloth and I'm just going to really wipe that down. I was putting away all of my sublimation materials the other day and getting my craft room all organized and I probably just got some fingerprints on there. So just because I really want to make sure this turns out really, really nicely, I am going to just take that extra step and make sure I get everything off. Okay, so that looks really nice. Now I am going to grab some heat resistant tape and we are going to place our design on the mug as well as three layers of butcher paper. Okay, so I have my design here and I'm placing it around my mug here and I'm noticing my little sides are a little too long. So I'm going to take just about a half inch off of each side. And I can do this with scissors at this point because um, I wanted to just make sure that top and bottom were really, really straight, but the sides, it really doesn't matter because they're just where I'm using my heat resistant tape. So I'll just trim that a little bit and then that is perfect. Okay, so now I am going to use heat resistant tape. You'll wanna make sure you use a heat resistant tape because the next step is placing this in a hot press. So you wanna make sure that the tape that you use is heat resistant for that hot part. Okay, so now the reason I wanted to make sure that that top and bottom was really straight is because that is where I'm going to visually line up my design on my mug. So I am also going to make sure that my, whoops, it is preheated. So I'm going to make sure that my little ends are the equal distance away from that handle, which they are. That looks really, really good. So now what I can do is I can grab a piece of tape and then I am going to just make sure that I have that lined up really nice. Okay, I like how that looks. So since I like how that looks, I am going to tape one side. I'm gonna let one side go, and I'm going to tape one side down right under that mug handle. And then I'll grab another piece of tape, and then I will pull tightly on that other side. That way it's very, very tight on the mug. Okay, and then I will place tape right under that handle once again. Okay, so that looks really, really good. Okay, so the sublimation paper is placed onto the mug. Now I have three sheets, so one, two, three of butcher paper, and I am going to do three layers of butcher paper around my design. So I am doing this that way, in case any of the ink bleeds, it does not get onto my mug press. So I will grab some heat resistant tape once again. And I just trimmed this paper down. Again, you'll want to use butcher paper. And then I will place some tape once more right under that handle to attach the three layers and then grab another piece of tape, pull that side really tight, just like this, okay. 
and place that other piece of tape right there. Okay, so we're all set. So you'll notice that it's a little bit tall right here, but that's okay um, because it's just going into my press and that's not an area that's going to be pressed on at all. So that's just fine. It looks really, really good. So now I can take my mug and I will insert it right into my press here. So I'm going to go ahead and insert that at an angle. Okay, and then I'm going to make sure all of my design is covered and press down just like that and then it will start the countdown. While that's pressing in the meantime I'm going to just place my heat resistant mat right off to the side because once that comes out of the press it will be very hot and we'll need a place for it to sit and rest and cool before we reveal our design. Okay, so that has beeped, so I will go ahead and just open up the lever, and then I will bring out the mug by its handle. Again, it's very, very hot, so I'm just going to touch the handle, which is very cool, and then I will place it off to the side to allow it to cool before we peel off the butcher paper and the sublimation paper. Okay, so this has had a little bit of time to cool. It's still a little bit warm to the touch, but safe to touch at this point. So I am going to go ahead and peel away my tape. Mm -hmm. 